Uh, hello, this is a note about uh, viewing the HRRR model called HER model, High Resolution Rapid Refresh Regional Weather Forecasting Model in OpenCPN. And uh, this is a unique model in, uh, in many ways. Uh, in fact, it was the first model, I think, globally that's, that was updated hourly. But this model is updated every hour. And it has a resolution of 1.6 nautical miles. And when you compare that to the GFS, the global model, U.S. global model, that's only updated every six hours, and it has a resolution of 15 miles. So it has a 10 times better resolution and much more often updated. So every hour they get new data from buoys and one thing or another, and they put out a new forecast. The forecast lasts 18 hours. Um, there's 18 hours. There's a nuance to that I'll come back to in a moment. But, so there are other U.S. models that are high-resolution models. There's a, one called the National Blend of Models, and there's the National Data Forecast Database. That's another high-resolution model. And then there's a NAM. There's a, there's a three-kilometer a three NAM um, model as well. But the difference is, the big difference is, and the importance to OpenCPN users is, none of those will read in OpenCPN. And in fact, the native HER model won't open in OpenCPN. Uh, we can thank SailDocs for doing the work. They actually, SailDocs downloads the, the, the raw HER model and converts it from the grid pattern. They're, these other high, that one and the other high resolution models are presented in what's called a Lambert, Lambert uh, conformal or a, a projection. It's like a great circle projection. So there, the grid lines here are off at an angle. There's, think about how a great circle chart looks. And that's the way a Lambert projection looks like. And so the, uh, most uh, uh, many uh, na uh, grid viewers and navigation programs can't read these uh, Lambert projections. A couple can, but uh, OpenCPN is one that cannot. But it can read the HER data. So this HER data has a special value to uh, OpenCPN users because it's the only, it's really the only high resolution model we have. However, there is some nuance to, uh, to using it. But before we get to the nuance, let's just look over quickly the process of downloading it into the, uh, into the program. And it's all set up to do that nicely. You need to have the, be sure that the GRIB, GRIB plugin is showing. That's here. And you get to the plugins. You click this button and go to the plugins. And then this is a GRIB one. And then you just uh, maybe update it, update your plugins, and then load it. And so forth, and then in the maybe go to the preferences and uh, draw a barbed arrowhead. Turn this one off. Turn this one off, and you get more realistic wind barbs. Uh, okay, that's good. You, that's all. That's a setup. Okay, that's done. And then you hit apply and so forth. Then once you have it, you can then just turn this on. Oh, I have one showing here. Let's see. How do I? Okay, then we get rid of it. Okay. Oh, hello. I'm back again. I actually had to leave for a minute to figure out where to, uh, how to delete a grib file uh, that's been already viewed. And so here's, uh, let me just show you where they're stored. The grib files are stored in the any file and enter a, enter a section called settings slash grib file names. And so that's where the list is stored. When you open one, it gets put into that folder. And if you want to delete them, that's the section you would delete out of the any file. Maybe there's a better way than actually operating on the any file to move them, but I, I remove them, but I, I haven't found it yet. Okay, so here we are, and we want to do the download the her model. So let me, uh, let's go back here. We open this up. Now there's no, val no gribs loaded. I've removed them. And so what we want to do, if we had one already stored, we would just click here in, the f in this folder, and then we could go up here. And here is a grib file. I could click this, and it will open. In fact, I'm going to come back and open this one in a minute because I downloaded it the way we're, do, we're going to do right now. But in, in the meantime, what you would do to, to make your own, to, to download one, is you click here, start a request here. 
and then we're going to do sail docks and we want to get the HER model and then the 0.03 every hour, it's valid. It actually, uh, they default to go out 48 hours, but let me explain that. The main data, the main f her forecasts are updated every hour and they extend out 18, 18 hours. But on the synoptic time, 0, 6, 12, 18, they actually run out for 48 hours. So this defaults to that, which is not, and yeah, you can't change it. You can't change it here, but we'll change it in a moment. Okay, and then let's say we want to do a manual. So I think it otherwise just picks what's on the screen here roughly. But let's just say we want a manual selection. And then you would, I think, let's see, I think I can just go, yeah. I'm just, I just left click and drag, and that's my manual selection. It's there. It looks like that. And um, uh, then you come up here and click this button again. Okay, so there is now we've done that, and that's our starter. This is what's going to be sent to sale docs, and, um, but we're going to want to tweak that a little bit. So let's just say send at this point, send, and that's going to open your email program. Uh, you want to get rid of anything that's there as extra. This equal is just to, uh, for if you're on a device with a short screen, that just lets you make a double line. But you don't really need that. And if you're uh, making this for uh, to be repeated, see, once you make a request, once you make a request and it gets you what you want, then you just send that email again. So it takes, it's worth it to uh, make the one you want um, in detail, and then you can just use it again. And for now, you can take the pressure, you can get the pressure, or we don't need the pressure for the for what we're doing right, for the point I want to make right now. We are big advocates of pressure. We always take the pressure. But for now, let's just look at the wind. But here's the thing that we have to be careful about. And you, in the subject line, doesn't matter. You could just say HRRR -R -R, and then maybe Cape Cod or you know something like that. You could put more. It doesn't matter what's there. Now, um, and, when, and for, for uh, sale docs, if you put just HRRR, -R -R, they make the assumption that that's for the 18-hour period. But if you, I think it, they have another, if you want the 48 hour, then if you want the 48 hour, then you would put, a, you would put an X here like that. Extended maybe is what it stands for. But the, we're after just, they say the 18 hour. It, what I'm, the main thing I want to get to in a moment has to do with the wind direction. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to apply to both the 48-hour or the standard 18-hour. But what is important for getting this data is to keep in mind this is high-resolution data, and these files are going to get big really fast. And you see what it did. It rounded from 41 to 40. It, rounded, it, 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 it just rounded off and went for two whole degrees, 120 miles. Now, you're never, with this kind of high-resolution data, you never really need to look at 120 miles. Or if you do, you have to change the, change this resolution down, make the resolution a lot, you know, make it 0.5 or 0.25 or something. Make it, well, that's, that doesn't work. The main thing is you generally want smaller areas. So what I would do at this stage is come back here and look at your, look at your program. Okay, so we've got this. What I want to do is tweak this number here to be just what we want. And so I can come back here. Oh, now here's another thing, too, to look at. You see, if I look down here, uh, the, the default, uh, the default uh, OpenCPN has degrees and minutes. And for weather work, generally for most weather work, you're going to want decimal degrees. So we go back to open, uh, OpenCP. Oh, wait, I guess you click here. Click the wrench. Go to display. Go to units and change this to uh, decimal degrees, decimal degrees, apply, apply, and OK. All right, now you see we're reading decimal degrees down here, and that's good. So where we want to go, if we want to just look at this Cape Cod Bay in here, we want to go from like, uh, what's that, 41.7, 
up to 42.1, 41.7. So here you'd go to 41.7, and then what was the top one here? Uh, 42.1, and it does not, uh, 42.1, 40. 2.1 like that and it doesn't matter which top or bottom the bigger or smaller here doesn't matter and then uh, which order you put them I, I, I think I'm pretty sure okay so this is minus 70 point okay they don't use it west is in a dig in a decimal in a decimal system west is minus so you see down here we're going from like 70.6 we're going to start over here at 70, uh, 70.6 on this one, 70.6 on this one, and then over to this side, we're going like 69, 69.9. Okay, 69.9. So you do it that way, 69.9. And then what do we got here? This is the resolution, that's correct. And this is one, two, out to 48. And normally this would be 18. You would, if you wanted to run it longer, if you wanted to run it longer, then you would, uh, you would put an X here, make that to 48, and then what it'll do is, I think it goes every hour for 18 hours and then every three hours for the rest. But this is the message you would send right here, and then you just hit send. Bang, like that. Now, I've done that, and I and then you get back. And with, in the return mail, you've done this. Many people have done this before. With sale docs, it comes back very quick. We're done with this. This has done its job. It created all of this. You can't, by the way, you cannot put decimals in here, you see. So I can't just, like, do it here. That would be a nice thing. And this, would, you know, this... In a sense, it'd be nice if this had just one, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can you can change that, uh, and but you you got to do it th this way, the way I just did, I th I think. Okay, that's that. We're done with that. So now I've done that. I got the mail back, and I put the file where I showed you. So now I am going to go back to this one because once you get the once you get the file back, you just literally drag it and drop it into a folder that you want. And so here's Cape Cod, and this is the one from SailDocs right here, this file right here. Um, so that's it, and then I say open. Okay, and so there is the wind over that region, and that's a high-resolution uh, data. You can, uh, let's see, M, it's my M key, M. You see, that's 1.6 miles. Um, okay, so that's that. But And then you get the time you want. This is standard for all of the, uh, uh, for all of the grid files. The thing that is special that I want to bring up, and in a sense it's the main, main part of this story, is that when uh, uh, SailDocs does a conversion from the Lambert projection to a lat lawn to a to a rectangular projection they do not make the correction for the wind angle and for it's it's unusual it's an it's an unusual policy but in fact the NOAA when NOAA provides us this data the wind direction from the um, uh, from the Lam on the Lambert projection, they give us the wind direction uh, relative to the grid, relative to the grid, not relative to true north. So what we're getting here is a wind direction relative to the grid, and we want the correction, we want the wind direction relative to true north. And so that means with the HRR data uh, from sail docs that we get here, we have to make this correction. And we're here on the East Coast, and this is about 15 degrees. The correction is about plus 15 degrees here in uh, Cape Cod. So if we go here, let's see how I read this wind direction here. Oh, you see the wind is being read up here at the top right there. So this says it's a 222. Uh, this is direction 250. 
you know, like 253, so 252. So 252, I have to add 15 to that, so that would be 267. So you just have to keep in mind that the wind speed is correct, but the wind direction that is shown on these uh, on this uh, her data is off by this grid angle, which you can see. Uh, let's see what you can see. Let me move this out of the move this out of the way and get this picture back. Well, get this picture back. So if you're on the east coast, on the other hand, you're San Francisco or something, it's like minus 15. But on the west coast, on the west coast, it'd be plus 15. So that is the subtlety. In the long run, that does not, that sounds like a lot, but in one sense, 15 degrees. Now, further out here in the ocean, further out here in the ocean, it's bigger. But at some point out here, you're going to be switching over to the GFS model anyway, and that won't matter. And now it's going to read exactly what it says. So this is only applies to the HRR model, and it only applies uh, to that data obtained from, um, uh, from sail docks. Um, but here's the point. It's, it, seem, it's, it seems like a big number, and in one sense, um, but is in another sense, it not is not really. Remember, the model data itself is probably only accurate to maybe plus or minus 10 degrees. And certainly, when we try to, our truth meter, our truth meter is either the buoys, we read the wind from a buoy or from our our, our own instruments are actually maybe better. We can do better. But if we're using government sources, we're reading data from buoys or we're reading data from uh, ASCAT. And the ASCAT and the buoy data is about plus or minus 10 degrees. And so when you deal with that, so it's in a sense, if you're just reading that and you're looking at it, just keep in mind what this offset really is when you're looking at the picture. But in reality, that doesn't matter too much. Where it does matter, however, is when you're doing routing. Let's say you got a race to Bermuda or something like that. You're going to route out of here. You're not going to use a GFS at the beginning down here. You're going to use a, or some other kind of local sailing or something. When you're doing routing, when you route with this model, then you have to be careful because that 15 degrees is a, is a big effect in the routing. All right, that's all I wanted to say for this, and that's uh, the, it's, uh, it's, it's the best, uh, uh, best model we have for uh, viewing in here, and uh, that's a correction to keep in mind.